Blue, stand. Now then, here we are on the side of Bow Fell and the summit is just behind me there at 902 metres and we have nowhere to be and nowhere to go so it is just one of those lovely days where you can just chill and just take it all in really. The plan is going to be just to probably mosey on over to Esk Pike, have a look around there. If there's somewhere really nice to pitch then we'll pitch a tent there, if not we'll come back and uh, I've already spotted a couple of places on Bow Fell where I can uh, fit a tent in but it's just a fantastic day it's quite breezy we're actually out of the wind at the minute but with that breeze it's actually given a wind chill today of three degrees to say we are in the middle of our summer and uh, behind over there the clouds are just sort of rolling in but hopefully we don't get clagged in because then you don't get these stunning views so Let's get on, eh? Let's get on and just have a, a look around and I'll show you what Bofell and Esk Pike has to offer. Well, up to the summit. Literally two minutes later and everything is just clagged in. So I banged a bit of colour on just to keep me dry because obviously as soon as you get wet, you get cold. Anyway, I don't know which way to head now. And I'll tell you what, if you got turned around up here, you will not have a clue which way to go. And this is why it is definitely worth bringing a compass for these sorts of things especially on a place like this because if you go off the wrong place there's some massive drop-offs there really is so anyway let's uh, head on to Esk Pike This is fun, out in the rain on a mountain with pretty much no visibility. I don't know if you can make out up there, a bit of a peak, but that's about it. Turn you around, nothing, nothing, just nothing. To say half an hour ago, you could just see everything absolutely clear as day. And this is why, if you're in the mountains, you must take a waterproof jacket with you. Absolutely. And waterproof bottoms if you've got them. I've actually got some with me, but I'm keeping these on because they've got a DWR coating on, so I'm going to test them out and see if they do still keep me dry. They are windproof, which is good. <laughs> and the other good thing is as well, I've got a pair of shorts in my backpack, so come tomorrow if I need to on something nice and fresh I can bang that on ah. oh look it's just clearing slightly <laughs> yeah anyway we'll find somewhere nice to get that tent set up Here we are at the summit of Esk Pike, 885 metres. And if you go get a dictionary and look up the word fun, there's a picture of this, exactly this. Yep, just one of those days, you just got to get out and just make the most of it, smile through it all. It's only a bit of water, it doesn't harm you. 
Anyway, from here, I am going to head back exactly the same route I've just done, back to Bowfell, and then hopefully we'll find somewhere to put a tent and just get out of this weather. And it's still fairly early, it's sort of like late afternoon now, and by the time I get back there, I suppose it'll be, it might be five o'clock, so at least we can uh, get a tent up and then just get some food on and that'll uh, hopefully keep me happy on this dreary day and a cup of tea. Tea always sorts you out, 100%. Well, I've got to say, it's pretty brutal out here. There's quite a strong wind coming through, so I've just sort of hidden myself behind this rock. But, yeah, if you look up in the dictionary, miserable. <laughs> this is uh, it's getting there, it is. Oh, dear me. I've just met a couple who have walked from Scarfell Pike, and they said it was really busy up there and that everyone up there pretty much was underprepared for this sort of weather coming in so there's going to be quite a few people struggling and when the clad comes in like this it's just so dangerous purely because especially a place like Scarfell Pike that when you get up there you know where you've sort of come from and as soon as the clad comes in you lose the sense of direction and it's quite easy because there's not really that many sort of defined paths it's all just sort of really rocky and you can easily end up going the wrong way down there and it's a long long walk back if you get it wrong loving it again anyway let's continue on to the summit up there which is Bofell oh dear <laughs> what a day what a day This will sort me out. Flapjack. Make anybody happy, Flapjack. Especially when you've got a view to take in like this. Amazing, eh? <laughs> mm. Do you know what? The best thing about walking in the rain is that you do some life reflection. You think about the crappy parts of life and you start thinking of ways of trying to cut out the dead wood. And we've all got a bit of crap to get rid of, so yeah, I actually really enjoy it. I would definitely advise to go out for a walk in the rain. Maybe not over this terrain because it is slippy and a bit dangerous but so next time it rains get your son out on a walk and i guarantee you'll start thinking more positively because what it does is it puts you into like a little tiny zone rather than having all the other things in life that are sort of pressing against you and you know distractions that sort of take you away from making decent choices like television and your ipad and phones and all that and as soon as you're out of all that and you're on a walk and it's raining you start to think and you know it's definitely a time for me where i develop my life and, and definitely in a positive way so yep just a thought <laughs> Here we are again then for the second time today, the summit of Bofell, 902 metres. Living the dream, look at this, what a place. <laughs> Complete transition from what it was earlier today when you could just see for miles and miles and miles. So when in the mountains, without doubt, you have to take waterproofs because <laughs> it can turn on a sixpence, it really can. Yeah, from here. <laughs> I want to keep this happiness level up and we're going to get off and then uh, drop down and hopefully find a very easy pitch. That's what I'm after today, an easy pitch.
There's the great slab. Well, we are in the middle of Crinkle Crags. And we have got a really nice place to pitch a tent here. There's quite a breeze coming through, but it's not expected to get too strong. I think maybe 20 mile an hour at most, so we can cope with that. But the fact that I've just got a nice area, a nice piece of grass, which it looks like it's an actual lawn, is just spot on. And uh, in the morning, I am gonna bring you the best, most epic view ever. Honestly, once all this clag decides to dissipate into another realm. So yeah, this is it, home. Home is here. Not a bad place to come, eh? At least it's not raining. view ever in the morning it's just starting to open up look at that just wow in a tent, I laid down, I pulled the sleeping bag over me and that were it. I've just slept for about an hour and a half. Hey Bluey, but I've woke up hungry so I'm gonna eat my dinner. I was gonna heat it up but I just can't be bothered. I'm gonna uh, just have a nice warm cup of tea just to sort of keep me nice and warm for the evening. <laughs> hey Blue, stop wagging your tail. <laughs> oh dear. So, for dinner we have, I've got a tuna pasta salad, not for you Blue, and with that I've got some tomato and chorizo pasta, some broccoli, and a chocolate bar just to finish it off with a cup of tea, and that's it. And really, this sort of wants heating up. It's a minute and a half in the microwave, but because it's soft, it should be fine to eat as it is. So that's it. I'm gonna get a spoon and just delve in. With broccoli, I'll just eat raw. And then, I'll get the dog some food as well. So you look like you might be hungry, eh? Should we do you first? Right, dog. Sort this out without spilling it on all my nice <laughs> dry gear. That smell nice. Not good. You wouldn't eat broccoli, would you? Mm. 
We've had a long day though, don't we? Right, there you go. You can consume that. And I'm going to consume mine. I do like a backpack with a head that comes off. Because then you can just put all your gear in here that you need that's accessible. So I've got all my toiletries in it and all my top tools and what have you, including my head torch, which I will need in a bit. Torch light for in here. And my titanium spork, which is just in this bag. I generally sort of keep my uh, sort of tooly bits. There's like a knife in there and another spoon and this. And I just put it in a one of these bags just to sort of protect the rest of the stuff in the bag, that's all. Just because there's a potential for being a bit sharp. <laughs> this does not come across that appetising. I really would prefer it hot, but anyway, it's food and I'm hungry. Tuna pasta salad's really good. And lots of tuna in it. Add a bit of this with it. Do the mixing in my mouth. This needed heating up. A bit of broccoli. Right, it's tasty. Mm. You can tell it's pretty windy as well. Well, this is best time of day. Cup of tea and a piece of chocolate. Although, <laughs> I want this to be about three times bigger. Highlight of the day. I can't say that. I've actually really enjoyed today, even though it has been a bit miserable out there. Oh, this is going to make you want chocolate now. Mm. It's just been one of those days where the weather comes in and it just takes away all those lovely views from you. But it's still really enjoyable. And one reason is, I guess, is that you can just uh, flip on your waterproofs and just carry on as if sort of nothing really has actually changed. I mean, it would have been nice to get the drone out and fly that around and show some of these beautiful sort of uh, mountains off for you, but it would have been like just filming a piece of paper, <laughs> just white everywhere. So yeah, not exactly thrilling. And it's just one of those uh, videos, I guess, it's just, how it is and here I am sat in a tent that's rather too small for uh, being in damp weather but still happy that's the main thing still happy and as I said as soon as you put your waterproofs on and everything you can carry on and still enjoy the day and make the most of it I mean if you didn't have the waterproofs and you know sort of kit to make you feel comfortable like a decent sleeping bag and you know a decent tent around you then things can turn sour rather quickly and pretty dangerous as well so definitely uh, worth carrying decent kit with you just to make sure that you are safe up there on the mountains yeah tea always helps as well tea just sorts everything out if you're not a tea drinker, you need to start drinking tea. Because from, uh, from a, a young age, really, I always sort of just have tea as my my time where I just sort of totally relax and chill out. I've just always enjoyed the process of it, making a cup of tea, going to sitting down and just sipping it slowly. And it's almost like a, an escape from everything else. You know, you just put everything aside and you just sit and drink that tea and it's just that warmth, but it just really nourishes the whole soul. It really does. So yeah, start drinking tea, eh?
take those moments to chill out and relax. Sat in a tent on a damp, gloomy evening on a mountain in the Lake District. I won't change a thing. <laughs> well, time for bed. So I'm gonna get out, brush my teeth, last toilet break, and my problem is that my trainers are absolutely soaking wet. So I don't wanna get my uh, socks wet that are gonna go in my sleeping bag. I have found one plastic bag, so that's one foot covered, and uh, the other one is gonna to have to be a barefoot one. So I'll limp my way out of the tent, brush my teeth, sort myself out, and then um, straight to sleep, I reckon. It has been a fairly pleasurable day, we'll say. So this is what it's all about, though. You've got to take the rough with the smooth, and when it is rough, just enjoy it as much as you can. Anyway, we will see the imp morning. That's better, just getting out of the wind for a minute. Look at this though, it's just heavenly. Just got these beams of light coming down. And the sun is just gonna pop itself out above there, I think. Yeah, what a place, just incredible view. I mean, just all the way around us, these different layers, especially with the sunshine here. All these layers of mountains. Yep, these are those moments you just take in and just last forever. I couldn't be any happier. Actually, there's probably a couple of things that could make me a bit happier, but <laughs> this is going to make me happier. 
some granola. Definitely breakfast time. Get my ball out. Ball and my titanium spark. I'll get this granola in and I've got some uh, milk as well. Proper milk nearly. Oh yes. Leveling up on happiness with this. Ah. And what a view. Looking out, just those beams of sunshine just pouring down onto that glaciated valley. Time to add another layer of happiness. <laughs> Cup of tea. This is probably about three layers actually. Get this lit. There we go. There we go. It's funny because I always say cup of tea in a uh, northeastern accent because um, I was working on this lady's uh, garden one, so we're doing like a big patio and all sorts of. Uh, fancy bits and um, this lady who whose bungalow it was her son had organized the sort of work and everything but um, she suffered from dementia and she, she'd come out when we first started the job and she'd be like would you like a cup of tea pet and we were like oh absolutely fantastic yeah brilliant thank you and then um, she made us a cup of tea and because she had dementia she kept forgetting that she'd made us a cup of tea and literally like every hour would you like a cup of tea, pet? And it's like you couldn't say no to this lady because it was just like the highlight of her sort of day, just being able to sort of look after people. And um, ever, ever since that point, I've always said, cup of tea. So yeah, such a lovely lady. Pop her into her sleeve. I'll tell you one thing that I always insist on when I come to going out camping and that is having an insulated cup because I don't <laughs> I don't like sitting there and just in the cold and your tea getting cold quickly so having an insulated cup it means I can sit for half an hour with this just chilling out and just taking in the scenery so yeah that's my tip get an insulated cup This is prime example why you need to embrace those moments whilst they last. <laughs> Look at this. Literally half an hour later and it's completely clagged out. And still pretty wild. Oh well, the clag has taken over. So I'm gonna get packed up and I'm gonna do everything I can in the tent because it is quite moist out there. <laughs> Great word, moist. So starting with shoving my sleeping bag away. When it's windy like this, you've got to be a bit careful that bits don't blow away as well. I've got this uh, pillow looming, ready to sort of go. So I'll deflate this as well while I'm on. And at least it's less chance of blowing away. What a day though. What a day. Waking up to that splendid view with that sunshine just fighting its way through all those 
clouds that were constantly just bashing at it. Yeah. Splendid, eh? Oh dear. I do love it now. I absolutely love it. Sleeping bag. With everything, there's a, an order. Everything goes in. goes into this, this goes into that, and that goes into this. And I'm a lid missing. Oof. Thought that might have blown away then. So pop the lid on. That's all my cookware sorted. And always the last thing to do really is your air bed because you always sit on it and it keeps your bum warm. So I'll undo the valve. get that air bed done. All packed up, just the tent to go, I'll just show you inside. We've got my backpack there ready, Blue's backpack ready, and then just this tent to go away. But you can see it's blowing a bloody hoolie through there. It's lifting this right off the floor. But it's a wild day. This tent though has held up really well. Taking a fair battery, but look at that. Solid. Right, let's get it away anyway and off. Back down this bell.
Here we are then at the summit of Crinkle Crags, 815 metres just behind me here. And I'm just crouched down behind a rock just to uh, get out of the wind for a minute because it's pretty harsh out there, it really is. And you can just see complete and utter clag. Cannot see a thing. So navigation is uh, a key to getting back down off this mountain. But it has been a pleasure. It might have been a bit more of a boring one for you guys to watch just because a lot of those views were taken away. But this morning was pretty epic, really. Waking up to that, not quite a sunrise, but more of a, I don't know, cloud movement and some sort of a sprinkle, we'll call it, just over the hills. So yeah, pretty awesome, really. And it just feels awesome to get out every single time, regardless of weather, as long as you are prepared with the right kit for it. So as usual, give it one of those. Go on, press that button. Cheers, pal, thank you. <laughs> and if you want to contribute towards the channel, you can buy me a coffee on the Buy Me Coffee link, and there is the Patreon as well if you want to join that community. Ah, yes, anyway, time for us to skedaddle off this mountain and go for a swim in some pea soup. Peace out, babe. Get on then, take care.